All right, quick disclaimer. Hey guys, there are some curse words yes. and other things. I have Mars and Aries in the third house. I couldn't help myself. So if you are listening with children or anyone that you wouldn't want to hear that type of language. She has a foul mouth. I do. It's just a bit of a yeah. disclaimer. Yeah. Just a little bit of a heads up. It's not horrible, but yeah. it's in there. So we just want to let you guys know. Enjoy the episode. Yay! Hi, this is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, where we educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. From spirituality, holistic healing, to creativity, and conscious business, we've got your mind, body, and spirit covered. Hello. Hi, guys. We're here in Hollywood at Liberate. I'm Raquel, obviously. I'm Angelo. Yes, yeah, so we are hanging out. Yeah, we're on the set of, uh, are we rolling too, Rebecca? So we're also simultane simultaneously recording for here at Liberate Hollywood. Uh, it's our spiritual healing center here in the heart of Hollywood. We're recording, we have our nice little logo with our new set. We do this thing called Deep Cuts, and we also have our podcast here. And uh, Raquel is one of our lovely people that comes in all the time. Yes. And we're always chatting about astrology. Yes. It was like, we're just we're like, hey, do you want to, they asked us if we want to do this. And you just yeah. Kinda, yeah. So I would like consider myself a self-proclaimed regular here at Liberate. I'm in here like pretty much every week, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, there's just like certain practices that I have on a personal level that mean a lot to me. Like I work with like candles. I do a lot of spell work. Um, and then obviously as an astrologer, I'm constantly working with the planets and the transits and the phases of the moon and so this is my go-to spot um there's a meeting that i go to right down the street my apartment's a little bit that way and so <laughs> this is kind of really served as like my safe space to come in and like everyone who works here obviously yourself included is so knowledgeable and really really helpful thank so you. i, I kind of you're very knowledgeable thank you, you're, 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 she's extremely knowledgeable. thank you well I, ca I came yeah. in here today and i was like having one like a day and I'm like just lounging on a couch downstairs and I'm like can I just like kick it and so we have some cacao which I've actually never tried you've uh, had chocolate you've eaten chocolate I've eaten chocolate, chocolate. Okay. I've eaten dark chocolate yes I actually went to a chocolate castle in Nicaragua oh which God. was fucking miserable it was so boring um I was hungover at the time yeah so, so maybe it wasn't slow. boring it could have been me <laughs> um but it was like done with chocolate for a while after that. I love chocolate. I thrive on chocolate. Cheers. Just cheers. Today will be awesome. It will be great. Yeah. Oh yeah, it says this. Wait, read <laughs> yours please. Live, laugh, and love. <laughs> so she wanted me to say a little bit of what cacao is and I wish I was an expert, but for me, I'm very oh. sensitive to caffeine and like uh, like uh, coffee and uh -huh. even green tea. So to me, this is an alternative. It's very grounding, but mm. it's, it wakes me up. But what's cool about cacao, like, um, and again, I'm not an expert, but I, it comes from the cacao bean. This uh -huh. is where chocolate comes from. If you taste it, like it's a little bitter, right? It's really good. But it's real, it's a little bitter. Like everybody uh -huh. thinks of chocolate and they're like, oh, it's sweet. And But when you have raw cacao bean, you take it, it's just like almost dusty and very bitter. But when it's, you know, added sugar and there's a whole process that goes on with it. But what is good about cacao very health-wise is it's got a lot of nutrients it's very very hard opening like reishi or some other mm. medicine like that it's good to take with other herbs because it helps to open up the capillaries so when you take some of these like other herbs like reishi or whatever medicines it will help to open up your blood capillaries so they can flow more with ease so would you say that like this would be something good for someone to drink who's ha experiencing like heartbreak or like heart transition or like any type of emotional like where they're looking for some type of cathartic release like would you say that Absolutely. this is beneficial yeah it's somebody okay. that does like we have cacao ceremonies we have like celeste yeah. celeste uh, uh, mcmillan right she does cacao ceremonies here and um it's just, it's a very, you know, it's like a, cere it's like a ceremony, like if you were doing ayahuasca or whatever. This isn't a hallucinogenic, but it's just, it's very heart opening, very heart centered. So absolutely, mm -hmm. it can be, it's just, whenever I drink it, you know, I just feel very calm. And peaceful. I do feel really calm and I've had like a lot of anxiety lately. There's been crazy transits. We've got <clears throat> eclipse season coming up and we're about to hit the shadow for Mercury's retrograde on the 20th, which I hate to like tell you guys that, but it's just the truth. So I'm actually already feeling the communication rifts because I'm Virgo, Virgo Mercury. So, so it's like, I'm really already kind of intensified in that. Um, so this is really nice today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wait, so what is your, do you have any stelliums in anything? I don't have any stelliums, yeah. um, 
um, which for me, I've, I tend to attract in clients who have Capricorn stelliums because mm. moon and Capricorn. And as you guys can see, I have my Capricorn brand, uh, new, tat. brand new tattoo. And I happen to be sitting with a Capricorn. Yes. Um, so I tend to attract in clients that have six house Capricorn stelliums, which I know is freakishly specific, but it's just how oh, it is. Six house Cap no. I don't my... remember your chart off the top of my head. Ahead. Wait, so wait, the last, okay, so but, I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead. Well, let me finish about stelliums really yeah. quick. So you guys, stelliums are, they're really cool because they pull in so much energy and it's so much planetary movement into one part of your life. But it is a double-edged sword because stelliums can create obsession. So it's very tough to balance out stelliums. And especially if you have a stellium in a house, like the sixth house, which is like daily activity routines, like work, you're going to be a workaholic to the point of burnout. Or if it's in your 10th house of career, you're going to be a freak about your career. You're never going to be able to slow down. If it's in the seventh house, uh, relationships, you're going to be obsessed, you know? So stelliums are cool, but to be taken care of in a way that has um, a lot of thought and a lot of, honestly, it takes a lot of personal development. Like if you have a stellium and you haven't hit your Saturn return yet, you're probably not mm. going to necessarily know how to manage that stellium until your chart progresses. So let me ask you. Yeah. Don't, is it? Right oh yeah, of course. The stellium, <laughs> you're like going on and on and on. Um, so it depends on the astrologer, but a stellium is three to five plus planets in one Gosh, house or one sign. Um, I observe four for stelliums, but again, it's it just depends if you're like an old school astrologer or not. And I don't know if I'm old school or not. Like um, Stephen Forrest is like, oh, I've been doing this for like I many, many Stephen lifetimes. Forrest. Yeah, and I feel the same. Like this isn't my first rodeo of being an astrologer, but in this lifetime, I like to see four more personally. Okay, can that include nodes and can that include Chiron or Black Moon Lilith? Um, I don't <coughs> fuck with Black Moon Lilith. Um, I just don't. Okay, um, but can you include, if, if you have anything like North Node, South I don't Node, can that be in, yeah. I don't consider the nodes or, uh, I consider Chiron to be a part of a stellium, okay. but I don't consider the nodes necessarily because the nodes are, they're not planets. I mean, neither is Chiron. Of course. So technically no, but I think it's preference. But, but Chiron no, is a planetary body though, but still. But either way, like your your node is so purposeful. Of course. So like if it happens to fall in a stellium, it's, you know, I think the node is more challenged there. Okay. Um, but do you remember your north node? My north node is uh, Libra because I'm, uh, oh, I'm an Aries. Oh, so sweet. I'm an Aries. I'm a, <laughs> You're I'm like, a, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, I'm, a, I'm an Aries. I'm an Aries south node. So like anytime, so mm, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let we me talked actually, about this, I remember. Yeah, what would you say then? So explain if you didn't, if I didn't already have like a preconceived notion of it and I was saying, what does my South Node Aries mean? Sure. So for me, the very abridged version of what that would be look like for you and something for you to, you know, ponder and think about as you embark upon your journey here is that a South Node in Aries indicates that in, you know, your most recent past life or multiple, you were kind of focused on I, me. This lifetime, it's a little bit, you need to shift that into we. Is so that why I'm a selfish bastard? Aries is I, Libra is we. So yeah. part of your evolution is going to be to yeah. lean into partnership, to lean into seventh house matters, and to lean out of self. Um, I also feel that people with Aries South Node tend to have past lives of um, as warriors of some sort. Yes, I've been told like, that. Not actually, like, I'm like some cool like, warrior, but like I've definitely had these things where I was felt very close to like the Vietnam War and stuff. Yeah. And past life mm -hmm. readings I've had where they didn't know any of this shit were like, and I've always felt so close to like 60s music and I know yeah. it sounds very like no, arrogant it's, but it's no, like no not at all but it also this stuff just goes back to like the, the when I was like a martyr and stuff like that and like Catholic the, you know like the you know the Catholic times and all that stuff mm -hmm. like that and yeah, but what's really beautiful for me about like the nodal study and practice is that I really truly believe, and I tell this to my clients all the time, that if you really begin to like <coughs> go in the direction of your north node, I believe that all of the gifts of the south node become Absolutely. available to you. What's your south node? Uh, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I just think it's funny because mine is very obnoxious. I'm Virgo, south node in the ninth, and I'm so you have the, the Virgo, yeah. Pisces, north node in the third. So I obviously have past lives. Ninth house is the house of Sagittarius. It's higher education, it's institutions, it's higher consciousness, it's also philosophy. So I think I, uh, for the first half of my life, I'm like, I'm a writer. I need to write books. I need to be talking and studying philosophy, and I need like, you know, the papers and the books, and I needed like the scholastic thing. And it wasn't until I started following my North Node in Pisces, which is all about communication and healing, then I started enjoying my life. And every time I'd try to write a book or be a writer or like lean into that, I would just fail and fail and fail. And then finally I really surrendered to this idea of 
wait, I can take what I love studying, astrology, and actually practice it in a way that's healing and communicate this to people. And then everything just kind of opened up for me. So is that maybe, is that like a hint that maybe past lives you were like this scholar, like that was maybe this Plato or somebody like yeah, that was I, very studying? Yeah, and I very... think I spent like my nose in the books, but not having a lot of like uh, sentimental, intuitive mm -hmm. moments in my life, and I wasn't communicating. So maybe I was someone who spoke on a stage about something really cool, but then I went home to like no one, <laughs> you know, like I just didn't, because Pisces is all about like intuition and feeling, and I just, maybe I didn't have that, it was lacking. So my soul wants communication and it wants intuition. Um, and sometimes in studying, it's so black and white, there isn't a lot of room for that Neptunian vibe. Neptune's the dream world, it's um, illusion. It's, it's like putting on rose-colored lenses. That that's Neptune, and so it is. It is a challenge for me to do that. Um, Moon and Cap, I consider myself a realist, and I just have to tell you guys, like being a realist doesn't do me any favors in love. It doesn't do me any favors in relationships. It's like sometimes we have to get dreamy, and sometimes we have to let ourselves get psychedelic and start looking through a lens that's like a kaleidoscope because then it's really exciting, right? Well, that's well put. Okay, so wait, the last few <laughs> days, you know, okay, I, I will say this, like, I was, I used to watch, and I still do, I watch a lot of, I'm still learning astrology, but I was watching a lot of, I used to watch a lot of videos and energy updates and stuff, and the last, like, four months, I kind of stopped, just because I was trying to be more present, mm -hmm. but, like, I definitely know that the last week, you know, we're always going through shit, and this ascension, and this and that, but, I mean, more people than ever, like, there was some heavy shit, and I'm not, gonna say, like, dark, or what it was, but we're clearing a lot. How can that, and I know you, there's a lot to explain in astrology, but is there anything that can pinpoint to what the last few days might have been very, uh, just hell for a lot of people? <laughs> I feel better now, though. Like, I feel you amazing. You feel the relief? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So we had a lot of, about a week and a half ago, we had a lot of Venus transits, and everyone thinks of Venus, and they're like, yeah, oh, love, so beauty. Yeah. Guys, Venus is the Marie Antoinette out of the Zodiac. This bitch wants what she wants, not what's best for us, right? So you need to be careful with Venus. She's not like this sweet angelic thing. I mean, maybe in Libra she may be, or maybe in Taurus she may be, because she rules those signs, but it's like when we get Venus in Aries, it's like red leather and whips and chains and we're all freaking out. Hey, I don't like and that. so yeah, Venus has had some hard aspects where it's actually been making us question what we want, what our relationships are like. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of separations, a lot of breakups, and that's just because it's that's the natural law of like where things should be. So it's like a lot of karmic endings have been happening that have been really hard for people. And it's not just in love. It's also <clears throat> like in our um, self-image, beauty. It's also with our finances, money. You know, we've just been kind of faced with these issues. And we had a Scorpio full moon that I believe forced all of that our shadows. It forced our shadows to come out and play. Like all my skeletons came out. All my shadows came out. Like I had nowhere to hide. I was so exposed. And it's just, I think we're still kind of cleaning up that mess. And over this past weekend, um, because the eclipses are on the Cancer Capricorn axis, we had a Cancer moon. So whatever happened this past weekend for you guys yeah. is actually a little bit of foreshadowing of what the eclipse might be bringing into your life. Ooh. So pay attention to what did happen these last couple of days. Okay. You know, um, the Capricorn Cancer axis has a lot to do with how we mother and father ourselves. Cancer's the mother of the zodiac. Capricorn's daddy Saturn. Cancer is what planet? That's no, the Cancer moon. Is, oh, the moon. The moon. Yeah. yeah. So it's the moon and Saturn. The moon is like feminine and Saturn, like yeah daddy Saturn you know he's here for like the limitation and the restriction and the moon is like nurturing but every planet in my opinion has like a high vibration and a low vibration and so a lot of these <laughs> moons and everything are bringing out the low vibration but that's so that we can grow and so that we can ascend and so that we can heal and like work through all the fucking shit I think it's so interesting that you brought up right away shipping some Venus, and I was like, I would expect to be like the Malefics, because it's usually the Malefics like Saturn and Uranus, or yeah, and they're you know, like these guys are in, you know, with their Pluto. Venus, and yeah, just, Venus is she's a trickster. Like Mercury and Venus, I feel are the two planets that people think they're like just very innocent, and like I do. Merc sort of. Mercury is like you know he pisses me off, like he's annoying. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he's like the prankster of the zodiac. The would he be the Joker of the Tarot or? 
Uh, I don't know. It's tough to say because I also feel like Jupiter is a little bit of a joker. But Jupiter, sure, sure. Jupiter is my favorite planet. Um, Me too. I have Cancer and Jupiter. What's your? Oh wow. Yeah. What's your rising again? Aquarius, Aquarius right? Aquarius. Yeah. So your Uranus, uh, your chart ruler is Uranus. Okay. So if there's one, if like there was some cruel law that told me I could only tell people one thing about their chart, that's what I would look at. What's your chart ruler? Because that indicates the type of world you're living in. How do you, so, oh wait, how's that? How do you indicate your chart ruler? Um, it's the planet that rules your ascendant. So you are Aquarius rising. Okay. So your chart ruler is Uranus. Okay. You're living in a Uranus yeah, world. Yeah, okay. I'm Sag rising. I'm living in a Jupiter world. I live in sideways. Oh, you're living in this unique, I need to march to the beat of my own drum. Yeah. You're living in a world that is all about like innovation, technology, networking. It's 11th house. But I can't use a printer. Well, that, I don't know what that's about. No, I'm just saying no. the technology, <laughs> like electronics and stuff. I like cryptocurrency, but I can't use a printer. Wait, so what I, I is think cryptocurrency is so weird. Like, why? Whatever. Uranus and Taurus is going to come to change all that anyway. You think so? Oh, yeah. It's going to change financial institutions, like, tenfold. Just wait. It's the last time Uranus was in Taurus, we had, uh, coming out of the Great Depression, Hitler rose to power. Wait, after what year Uranus came into work? The 84 years ago was the last time that Uranus was in Taurus. Okay. The last time we had that big transit, we were coming out of the Great Depression. People uh, were using money to yeah. burn to keep warm. Um, Hitler yeah, especially rose. in Germany. Yeah, Germany. Oh, yeah. The Deutsche Mark was like Yeah, worthless. it was absolutely crazy. Yeah. And like there was some weird shit going on with like the Chinese dynasty as well. Um, Interesting. And, you know, we've got some of our own weird stuff happening in this country right now, so... But I, I don't know. I think we're in the age of Aquarius, too. So I have faith that... So if you're born between uh, 1984 and 1995, which is a lot of us, um, you are Pluto and Scorpio generation. Pluto and Scorpio generation, we are actually here to clean up and fix the mess <laughs> that's been created by the generations My generation, us. 1977. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of healers. If you're born between um, those years, chances are somewhere within you innately you are a healer. And I think that's why we're about to see a rise in like, we're already seeing it, a rise in life coaches, um, practitioners, healers. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to access these modalities now and share them with one another. So I always have like a lot of respect for people who are doing this as like their life mission. Sure. And moving out of, living here in LA, I've met a lot of people, maybe you have as well, where maybe they came here to like be some type of like famous. Actor, yeah. yeah. And they're moving out of self and they're moving into healing. And so it's, many people. Yeah. It's so cool because like Chiron also is in Aries now. So all of us are actually, whether we like it or not, we're being forced to look at our wound of self right now. So I have no wounds. We're all to look fucking at. No, gutted. I'm yeah, we're all, you know, this is totally off topic, but not. You brought oh my up God, no, part. I love it. No, but like, this is totally like another point. Ask me like, anything. Yeah, I was talking about the cryptocurrency and I always ponder <laughs> this because. You know, I don't know a lot about the cryptocurrency, but I, I've, I've dabbled in it a little bit, and it's been interesting. Did but, you make money? Um, no. I, 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 a little, but <laughs> like not what? a lot. Like what? Like five dollars? No, I did a little. It's a little bit. But what? That's Can not, you give us but, a number? No, because that's. that's but probably, I want to know. Let me tell you off camera. I want to know though, like if this is something that people are making legit, like I can okay, pay my okay, rent. Okay, do you want to know? Okay, well, so mm -hmm. I did because I, I wasn't trying to bring this up about myself, but I don't. Okay, so I was when I was in Berlin, I hosted, I actually hosted this show where I interview musicians and stuff, and my friend was doing it, and I wanted to be learn about cryptocurrency because to me it was interesting, and at that point I think. Jupiter was, it was some point where like, the, it was actually very good. When I saw it, it was actually a very positive time for like money and I forgot the aspects or something. Was it recent? Time. Yeah, it was a year ago. A like year in ago. May or April or something. But anyway, so I hosted this show and um, they paid me a little bit of euros and I got paid a little bit of the Ethereum, one of the cryptocurrencies, but one of the owners of uh, the company, they had just launched, it was a startup and he gave me uh, a little bit like 500 worth of uh, this this token and I my friend had me invest it into this thing and I'm like okay I didn't look at it and then he calls me like a couple weeks ago and it's worth a little something not like hundreds of thousands or can I have that. some huh can I have some <laughs> maybe <laughs> so um, it's it's I'm just letting it's not a lot but if I learn and play it smart it yeah, can be like a nice supplemental it. income mm -hmm. and I I'm it's but at the same time with cryptocurrency it's completely it's unpredictable. It's um, it's grown a little. Right now, it was worth nothing, but it's worth like five dollars a share. But it's a little, it's it's a little more now. But um, it could go to nothing or it could grow. Hmm. So, but that's but off the topic of me, I was curious because to me, I feel like something like Bitcoin, all these things, is going to absolutely explode. It's going to undulate. 
But the only thing I think that would stop that is if, and this is crazy, like if we had some earth change or something where all of a sudden, like, say the satellites crashed or this and that, and we had to go back mm-hmm. to, like, one-on-one, yeah. like, bargaining so with gold. It's, what is your idea? To on me, that? it's not crazy because Uranus is in Taurus. Taurus is an Earth sign. It is currently in Taurus. Taurus, yes, currently in Taurus. And Taurus also rules the second house of money and material wealth. Um, and the material world, what we can touch, see, feel, this is an Earth sign. And so Uranus, as you know, being your chart ruler, it's yeah. all about sudden change, mixing it up. Yeah, yeah. So that is, you think it is factor. possible. And I'm not a doom and gloom person. But I think it is very palpable to think that all of a sudden maybe yeah. we what I, have to learn to, we won't have oh our yeah. phones for a while. What I will say, and to anyone watching this, um, I'm happy that I get to say this to you. If you have a business that is just on Instagram or just on Facebook, you about to get fucked. <laughs> you need to have your own website. You need to have your, you need to have something separate that like, Zuckerberg is not involved in. If you wake up tomorrow morning and your Instagram is gone and your Facebook is gone and that means your business is gone, you need to like start laying some foundational groundwork right now into a better plan for yourself. It's not sustainable and maybe it won't go away for five or 10 or 20 years, who knows, but if it does and these things happen and Uranus is in Taurus, you really wanna be prepared. So if you're just living your life virtually and I run an online business as well, but I also make connections with people in person. I have a lot of clients that I meet while I'm walking down the street, whatever. You have to be open and talking to people and be telling every single person about what you do and getting clients from everywhere. And the reality is like, if you're passionate about your business, you should be doing that anyway. Um, But people who brag about like, I don't even have a website. I just have clients from Facebook. It's like, I wouldn't brag about that. Like it's really just not, in my opinion, it's not like, it's not in favor of Uranus. Does anybody use Facebook anymore? Um, I use it. I I was like, wait, I actually dated this guy and I, this is like not recent. Yeah. Like my ex, ex, ex or something. I don't remember. It's hard to keep track, but no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But Venus and cancer. So I like, feel like I'm like a serial monogamous, but, um, he was like, ew, you're checking us in on Facebook. Like who fucking does that? And he was like disgusted about it. I thought it was cute. It's like, I'm I, letting I, people know I'm with you. Like, what is the problem? No, it's okay. It's, right? But but I was going to I was more on the idea of, and I get what you're saying with Zucker, Zuckerberg or some of these people take mm, it away, mm-hmm. but maybe you should learn more about is like the blockchain. That's what cryptocurrency runs yeah. on. I'm not an expert on that, but it's the thing is things like my, my space, like all these Instagrams, they're centralized. So they go to one place. Um, But whereas like the blockchain, the way it runs is it's like decentralized. So that's what's cool about it is that you can do these things kind of under the radar. As long as the computers are running and you have internet, you can keep these things running. So anyway, we'll talk more about that. But this is how you know it's an Aquarius rising because like everything he said, like Aquarius is intercepted in in my chart in the second house. So I, I use technology to make money, but it's like, it's not something that's like a natural for me. And everything he's saying, I'm like, uh huh. Like, sure. <laughs> See, people who meet me, I'm like this total. Like, I'd rather if I could just live in the woods and be a hippie. That's, I mean, that's yeah. why. Like, no, I'm not a hippie, but you know what I mean. Like, I love my phone, but I also at the same time like I can fuck off. But I'm like, I'm trying to be smart about okay. Instead of being like this old bastard that's too good to use all this stuff, yeah. I'm just trying to like, okay, how can I make it? How can I use it to help me? Where I'd rather. How just, long do you think you'd survive if you had to live off the land? I think what well, depends. I wouldn't be Aryan because I'm pretty good at that. But all that, to be honest, too, it just depends on the resources. Yeah, it depends on like how much food. But like, like a, po- a long zombie apocalypse, <laughs> probably not that long. But I think if I had to just live off the land and like I don't know how to like do anything. You, know, <laughs> like, you can hang with me. I'll teach you how. To yeah, do something. like I don't know like how to fish. Like I mean, I guess I I'd, can teach you. To- I guess I'd figure it out. But maybe I should be talking about. Maybe I should be taking some survival skill classes. That's true. Like that, up in the woods or something. That's what I was going more. I think more like things like the Burning Man. A lot. I've never been to Burning Man, but like all those things are were made to get people to be learn to live be more tribal and that's why people are more interested in like eco villages and just so many more of these things like learning to be more I thought Aquarius also isn't Aquarius also about like it's innovative yeah innovative it's like ingenuity and yeah and and ingenuity innovative in this industrial post-industrial age whatever it can be the coming back together like this tribal sense of survival techniques because you never know I guess I'm not again I'm not a doom and gloomist but like when something could like you know, goods and services, something could shut our shit down for a few months. And we're like, what are we going to do? Like, we should, everybody lives in L.A. should be able to go into Griffith Park and 
not kill a squirrel and eat it, but like, but like know what plants and stuff, you, if you gotta kill a squirrel, eat it, but know what plants that you can eat and stuff like it to survive. I know it sounds crazy, but. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't, just, just still, it's gonna be prepared. <laughs> So all this is to say, prepare for the end of the world. No. Uh, yeah, I don't believe in the end of the world. It's just, I, I think, I believe in the good, but. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I have a question for you. So of all the um, main planets in your chart, we'll say like the top six, is there one that you resonate the most with? Because I pers I talk about this a lot. Um, I resonate more with my, my Mars and Aries, my Capricorn moon, and my Sag rising. Um, the Virgo stuff, I... I aspire to be like a Virgo, but I don't, I don't know. I don't feel the, as deep of a connection with yeah. Virgo sun. I like my Mars and Leo because I don't really think I have any other Leo aspects, but for me as a musician and stuff, it's just kind of, I'm a, I think I'm a pretty passionate person when I, when mm. I am, when I am ignited. So that kind of helps feed that. But I also like my, my Jupiter and Cancer because I'm very close to my mom. I'm a mama's boy, and it just, I think I'm a... Com Do you know what house your Jupiter is in? I can tell you right now. Okay. Should I, is that weird to look now? No, it's okay. not weird. I was just curious. Um, I just love Jupiter so much. Yeah. Um, oh my God, you're making me do it. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you're Jupiter in the fourth in Cancer. I just like to point out that two chains. Oh, that's Gemini. No, what is that? Two chains has this placement, and it, literally his moniker before two chains was Titty Boy because he loves his mommy. Two chains. He's a rapper. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, that's really really funny. And Moon in the seventh is really nice. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I'm just I'm I'm just a babe at learning astrology so it's a I'm lot. intrigued I'm it's intrigued to learn more it's a lot of information like it's just it's a lot to process unless you're truly trying to study it like I remember the first time that I looked at a natal chart I was like very discouraged and then I would google I have sun in the 8th house so I'd go on there there's frightening shit on the internet like they're like if you have sun in the 8th house you're gonna die I'm like what it's like that's absolutely insane you know so there's you know I always just want to encourage people to like really do your studying and there's so many resources um, I love like Rob Robert Hand, Stephen Forrest, Susan Miller, who Miller. we met together here. Um, I love Annabelle Gatt, Elisa Kelly. Papacha. Yeah, there's Everybody so many. Yeah. There's so many like cool ways to learn astrology. So you know what? Real quick, I know it's it's six eighteen, but one last question is yeah. What, what about okay? Because I still need. I, I want to learn more about this. And like David Palmer talks about the progress chart, and I told you. <laughs> Okay, so anybody, like, here's my, where I'm stuck in astrology is, and I just haven't learned more because I've been so busy, but I kind of stopped watching a lot of these videos where they're like, oh, Mars is this and this, and I'm like, because sometimes it doesn't apply to me. One, because I got a lot of fucking planets in retrograde in my natal chart. Me but too. But also, I, I, I feel like until I can understand my, my progress charts, then it's hard to pinpoint stuff more for myself. So well, what's the question, though? Like, I heard everything you yeah, said, yeah, but I didn't yeah, pick yeah. up on the question. Well, maybe I'm just saying, like, how do progress charts differ from just your NATO chart? And how can it oh, help you more pinpoint yeah. more of, like... So, progress chart is sort of in the same ballpark as, like, a relocation chart, where, like, you move to a new city, and then your chart kind of changes because your vibe changes. Or as you grow older, like, where things Well, shift, that's right? the progress. Okay. Relocation doesn't have so much to do with ah, age okay. versus location. So, the progress chart is actually my favorite. So, every 30 years, your chart progresses. So, okay. after your first Saturn return, and then after your second Saturn return. And so, it's this idea that, like, when you meet someone and they're 62, they're clearly a different person than when they they were 25. The progress chart marks those internal changes as yeah. indicated by how certain planets and certain houses and certain degrees would perhaps all kind of make up this one person. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, when I turned 30, I went from a Capricorn moon in the second to a Pisces moon in the third. My north node is in Pisces in the third. So my moon, my internal emotional self, lined up with what I'm here to do. Yeah. And I get that for the next 30 years, and then it'll progress again. My sun went from Virgo, analytical, in the ninth house, philosopher, south node, into Libra in the tenth, which is putting my sun sign, what I output to the world, into my house of career in Libra, which is partnership and one-on-one -on -one connection, which is literally what I do in my business. So that kind of null and void your natal chart because you have to look at the progress then, right? If you're um, looking at I think, well, your, your chart's always going to be your chart. 
Okay. I like to look at both. I like yeah. to, um, it's just all about feedback. Astrology is all about information and feedback. And it's, it's a language of trying to yeah, put it together. Yeah, it really is. And it's, it's kind of like what you could maybe compare it to is like how there's a phrase or something you want to say. There's a couple different ways to say it. It's personal preference. It's what resonates. And it's like, take what you like and leave the rest because... There's no such thing as like a perfect natal chart and there's no such thing as 100 and million thousand percent resonance with every little thing in your chart because we have free will. So astrology can only take you 50 percent. The other 50 percent is your free will and it is our free will and our free will alone that determines our experience and our journey. So like the Akashic records in a sense or it's just like a blueprint that we can kind of. Yeah, it's like for me, I always like feel like it's like a guide. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and if you're using it to like create self-fulfilling prophecies or to make judgments about someone. One, then stay the fuck off astrology because you're not doing it right and it's a yeah. disservice to the practice really when when we do that to ourselves and to other people absolutely yeah you know what i think i think this is a cool place called the great hollywood and you should, <laughs> you should do a, a workshop or a, a, a something there. yeah i really like that idea yeah that'd be really fun look at us capricorn moon capricorn sun just coming up with business ideas left I and know, right but i remember when i met her that's she, capricorn she, she was here for the susan miller thing and you're she was you were asking all these questions and just you were like all everybody was kind of like i don't know they were asking questions here but yours were just so like very like on it you know and yeah then, uh, thank you yeah, yeah, yeah and i know rebecca's is, is an yeah. amazing astrologer back rebecca, there rebecca come hug us come yeah. say hi yeah. ah. guys this is rebecca she's been she's this was her idea today quick hug yes <laughs> so she's here at liberate too you guys if yeah. you're in hollywood you. if you're in california and will you guys both tell everyone before we hop off, um, yeah. like your Instagram handles and how to contact we'll you? Put them also. I will put them in all the notes. And oh, good. The but tell them right now what where they. Yeah. Can so find you it. guys know mine, obviously. <laughs> mine is uh, Angelo Lovato Music is uh, my Instagram. And my Facebook is not. Yeah. <laughs> but our people don't know yours. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm um, Rack Ray LA. It's R A Q R E Y L A. And it is not even profound. It's like my first name and last name abbreviated and where I live, Los Angeles. <laughs> And if you guys want to check out um, any other work that I do, it's RackRayLA.com. And I do, um, you know, chart readings. I do synastry. And I do a lot of one-on-one longer-term work with clients. And I have a new program that I'm launching that is going to take you through eclipse season. Awesome. Yeah. If you're watching her page, give a shout-out if you want her to come to Liberate Hollywood. (laughs) And we have an amazing stage where she can do do some kind of workshop or something. It'd be cool to have have you do something. It'd be fun. And if you guys are in Hollywood, would definitely stop here if you're ever visiting this would be the place to come to get all of your magical supplies yeah, stuff. 6365 Selma Avenue um we're right across from Trejo's talk. And so. this building that we're in is really cool. Can What's the history of the building again? I don't want to mess it up. You're not messing it up. It's Hollywood Sound Recorders. So this place used to be a recording studio. So back in the day, like Prince, Prince! Michael Jackson, whether you love him or hate him or whatever, but this, he recorded here the Jackson 5, um, the Stones, Dean Martin. So cool. Like, there are some serious... You can feel it. You can, yeah, I you can feel, feel it. it That's, That's why I'm cool. always hanging out here. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm just going to go to Liberate and hang. A fun little it's a fact, really yeah. good energy. When we first got this place, it was still a recording studio. So my, and like, it, the, the smell of weed in the walls <laughs> was like, it was, you could smell it. It's like it from the 70s. Like <laughs> something. I could probably scrape the walls and resin. sell that resin. Are you serious? But Nick Kenner's yeah, resin from totally, the walls totally, of the recording totally. studio. I swear there's a market for that. Something. Here we go again with the Capricorn know, energy right? trying to make money. Yeah. Okay, we need to go to dinner. No, all right, no. guys. Well, thank you so much. It was lovely to connect in. Thank you. I'll read all these comments later. Mwah. And Bye, Angie, guys. Real quick, the, yeah. you're available for Reiki and things like that. We never mention it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, God, yeah. Yes. Tell them. So yes, I'm also a Reiki. Pra- I'm a Reiki practitioner. I do some little bit of pranic healing and... Um, just very intuitive. <laughs> uh, just it's you like can come see thing. if you if you're like feeling drained and tired, you need to recharge. Um, yeah. I think I he's got, got the stuff. I got the stuff. We he's all got, got the good we stuff. We all got the stuff. So yeah. bye guys. Yeah, bye, ciao, ciao. Mwah. If you enjoyed this conversation, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want some more amazing resources on your path of liberation, head over to liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram at Liberate Hollywood. 
all one word, or Liberate Emporium, all one word. Until next time, liberate yourself.